Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, it's the Sketch Monkey here and today I'm at Urban Motors and I have something extremely special to check out today. I'm so glad I got the opportunity to check out this. This is the 1997 Eagle Talon and this is the non-turbo version. This is front wheel drive and the thing about this specific ver uh, car right here is that it's a one owner from 1997 and it only has 9,000 miles on it and have a look at the condition this is like a time capsule this car such a cool design now you might think that this is not a eagle this is actually a mitsubishi eclipse and you would be correct because they are mechanically almost identical however there are a couple of design changes specifically in the rear end that makes this different from the uh, Eclipse and I'm gonna point them out to you in this video so what we're gonna do is of course have a look at this design typical 90s melted cheese design from a front side and rear and then I need to show you this beautiful mint interior as well but first of all Let's turn this off and let's talk about some of the spec and tech. So let's pop the hood and let me show you what's hiding under there. We have a two liter inline four and this is the ESI. So this, as I said, is not the turbo version of this car. So we have a two liter inline four. Let me put the prop rod up here, see if I can do it with the camera in my hand. There we go. We have 140 horsepower and 130 pound feet of torque. And this is then connected to the five speed manual transmission that we have in this car. And just looking at it, it's like a throwback to the 90s in this specific condition. It'll just look so good. Now, you could get this as the TSI, and that would have a turbo added to this, brings it up to 210 horsepower. And you also had all wheel drive in the TSI. Now you might see that uh, the battery and the timing belt sit very high up here. So if we look at it from a side view, you're gonna see just how much the, uh, the battery and the timing belt sticks up here. And that is why we have this hood bulge or the power bulge on the hood itself to create the uh, needed distance from the battery up to the hood. So this is not just a cool design features it actually has a lot of functionality to it and you can see the same thing on the eclipse so let's start with the front end here of the uh, 97 eagle talon so we have this big eagle emblem in the front end and eagle went out of business in 1998 and that means that this car is one of the very last models to roll off the assembly line as an eagle now the difference is between this and the Eclipse is, first of all, we have the pretty much exact same headlights. So there's not a lot of changes in the front end compared to the Eclipse, but the big change happens down low. So you see this lower section with the intakes right here. We have more of a frowning face on the Talon, while in the Eclipse, it has more of a smiling face. And it also feels, overall, the Eclipse feels even more melted cheese than the Talon did back in the 90s. And the thing about this design and designs from this era, if you look at the overall styling, there is not a single sharp line on <laughs> these cars. And if I were to pick one car that resembles, uh, you know, the melted cheese era in a perfect way, it could either be the Eagle Talon or the Mitsubishi Eclipse. Both of those have this melted cheese going all over the exterior but also the interior which you're going to have a look at in just a minute now this one is fitted all original so it's got 9,000 miles on it and it's the original wheels and tires on this car as well so we have 205 16 inch wheels in the front end with the original design and as you can see the design of the wheels themselves also have this melted feeling to it. It's like it once used to be sharp, then it sat out in the sun for too long and everything just started melted. That's what I think of when I see cars from this era. And you have the same tire setup all around. So 205 16s in the front and in the back. Now they did make some updates through the years and one of those updates were to have this 16 V D O H C be contrasting color with the rest of the body. That used to be the same color as the body. And if you look at the side view here, it's very hard to see what is different from the Eclipse, specifically because this car is black, because the Talon always had a black roof and the Eclipse had the roof being painted 
in the same color as the rest of the body. And by the way, if you're interested in this specific car, this is going up on Bring a Trailer and I'm gonna have the link down in the description once this is live. Now looking at the side mirrors, it's so interesting to look at cars from this era because as I said, there is not a single sharp line anywhere on this car. Look at the shoulder line. I did, there is no shoulder line, it's just a bulge. The whole car is just a big curvature of volumes and that's why I think this is such a special era. The Supra had similar design to it but it had bigger volumes to it so it feels like almost like an RX-7 or an Eclipse uh, that's you know that's on steroids. That's what the Supra Mark IV looks like that is also of course from the same era as this. We also have this piece which looks interesting, very interesting that they added this detail onto right in the middle, pretty much in the middle of the height of the door, you have this big trim piece that goes upwards into the rear end. Now just because we don't have any sharp lines in this design, you can still see some line flow here if you really look at it, you know, uh, with a clear lens, because you have this line at the, at the front end right here sticking up coming up and it kind of starts to build up this piece that we have in the side and if we draw a line from that area in the front end right here into this piece in the side it then also comes back right there in the rear end so we have a clear connection a clear line flow of this talent which is nicely done by the designers this was probably designed designed back in the 80s if it went into production in in the 90s so now coming around to the rear end and what makes this special is this wing. I mean, there's a lot of things that make it special, but have a look at the integration of this wing back here. It goes from literally the C, it's, it, it's mounted on the C pillar right here, coming back, going around all the way into the other side. I've never seen, maybe the Ford um, Escort, Ford Cosworth had a similar style with a double wing, and then you have the brake light right here in the mounting point of this wing itself. Now this is where the, the big changes come happen if you compare this to the Eclipse for example. You can see that this is completely different from the Eclipse. A lot more changes in the rear end than we have in the front end when it comes to the design. For example, we do have an amber uh, top part of the taillight in this section which is red on the Eclipse and it's also a lot thinner and then we have the talon being actually part of the plastic right here on the Eclipse. The model name is just simply a sticker. You can see that we have the same plastic treatment here. So this feels a little more maybe high quality than the, um, the Eclipse because we have these pieces being separate pl plastic pieces and not just stickers onto the car. Another difference is that you see the license plate um, position, it's in the middle here on the Eagle Talon. Well, on the uh, Eclipse, it sits down here. So that means that we have a completely different bumper for the Talon compared to the Eclipse. And if you compare this to the Eclipse, the Eclipse definitely looks a lot more bubbly and even more uh, melted cheese than this, even in the rear end. But I do like that we sort of have a nice little send off right here. This is probably the sharpest line you're gonna find on this entire car and that is this rear end. I do like that we have this curvature going inwards like this and the bumper itself looks pretty decent because it is a proper bumper and we have uh, the original exhaust down there not looking pretty well integrated but that is all part of the mid 90s. So let's open up the rear end, the trunk and let me show you what's hiding under here. This is of course a hatchback so the entire rear end lifts up and have a look at the condition of this 1997 Talon. 9,000 miles on it, you can definitely tell that by just looking at the paint job and the overall condition of this car. Beautiful to see one of these cars still alive and in this condition. So with that said, we talked about the exterior. Let's jump in and have a look at the interior. And let me show you why I think the melted cheese is definitely coming back in the interior as well. All right, so let's step in to this time capsule that is the Eagle Talon 1997. Have a look at the condition of the leather. Everything looks ex like properly brand new. You have the door handle right here and you have a big circle on everything is still a curvature on the interior right here. An overview of the interior, a lot of hard plastic just like we're used to from this era. And I definitely like this color combination with the black exterior and then you have this light brown in the interior. I'm not really sure 
what to call this pattern right here, but it definitely does not look like a modern car, and I absolutely love that. So let's jump in here and let's fire this up and get the AC blowing. And as you can see, a lot of roundness in this interior as well. We, of course, have just a regular key. 1997, I don't think. Maybe a few exotic cars had start buttons, but not an Eagle Talon. You're not going to get that in this. So as you can see, 9,500 miles on the odometer of this thing. Hard plastic. This is actually soft touch material. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised by that. I definitely thought that this was going to be hard plastic, but it's soft touch. And that makes it feel a little bit more premium than I thought. This is uh, hard touch materials right here. Look at the design of this center console with the vents integrated, having the same curvature as the outline right here. Let's turn the air on. You have the hazard button up here and you have AC controls. Have a look at this. This is not something that you're ever going to see today. The simplicity of this layout, AC on obviously works fantastic. You have where the air is going to come out from, super easy to use. You can see what Eagle prefers because you have these brackets around the main uh, setting right there where it blows right on your feet and on your face. You have the fan speed. Sounds very, very strong and you also have the temperature uh, dial on the right side with the this uh, setting as well if you want to circulate it or not. This actually looks like the original uh, sound system for this car because we have a cassette player and I haven't seen one of these in over a decade for sure but it, it, it still feel, has this nice touch to it. I'm not sure if you can hear this. It feels proper all the buttons as you can see work and you can turn this on and off by just pressing this button right here. We have some nice static going on so let's turn that back off. I love that this is still intact. I love that the fact that this is a hundred percent original. I'm not sure how many of these are left in this condition and moving further down you have some storage compartment right here for a couple of markers. You have a five-speed manual transmission which feels pretty nice. I mean remember how old this car is and this still feels almost brand new. You have a cigarette outlet here, you have some more storage compartments in the middle. This is actually a cup holder, it even says cup holder so you know exactly what you need to put in there and then you have a smaller compartment here, not sure what you can fit in there, a couple of coins, maybe a, a set of keys. The armrest sits pretty low down as you can see but you can open it and it shows you this pretty shallow uh, storage in the middle. People didn't need as much stuff back in the day as they do today. So these type of uh, compartment sizes that you have here is totally fine. And we also have, of course, we do have a glove box in this car. Now looking at the steering wheel, I think this steering wheel will symbolize the melted cheese era. This I can just have this on the wall and it will be a great visualization of what melted cheese is all about because have a look at this rounded here of course the steering wheel is round first of all round corners absolutely everywhere I do love that we have the eagle logo right here in the middle you have the horn sounds healthy and you have this cutout for the SRS airbag in the middle very traditional looking steering wheel you also have the indicator uh, stock on the left side right there and you have the wiper stock right here on the right side. Look at that. To the left side of the steering wheel you do have the controls for the mirrors to adjust them electronically. Fantastic and you also have the cruise control setting right up here. Now looking up top, have a look at this. We don't have any sort of sunroof in this. Instead we have a perfect headliner that doesn't look like it's you know been around for over 20 for close to 20 years. This looks like it came out of the factory yesterday and that goes for these seats too. Noth nowhere at all on, on this car. It's absolutely incredible to see the condition of an old car like this. Back seat looks also, you know, it looks like no one has ever sat in the back seats of this car ever before. I do like that we have the brown going into the seat belts itself to continue this uh, color uh, scheme that we have going on in the interior. But with that said, we've talked about 
this e exterior and the melted cheese design that we have in both this and sort of the Eclipse because they are essentially mechanically identical and almost design-wise as well. We talked about the interior, but now it's time to take this for a very short drive just to see what it feels like to drive around this car and see what it is to drive a true time capsule. All right, guys, let's take this for a short spin just around the block in here to see what this 97 Talon feels like. Pretty much as if I was taking delivery from the factory itself. It's so rare to have a car like this where you have it in this condition with this mileage today. As I said, I'm not sure how many of these are left in the wild and specifically in original condition, but it, fe it feels brand new. As I said, I'm just gonna take it around the block because we don't wanna add more miles onto this beauty. It sounds great too, even though it just has 140 horsepower, you know, 140 horsepower, 130 pound-feet of torque. But the thing is, cars back in the day, they didn't weigh anything like they do today. They were so light. They didn't have all this technology and uh, safety features that, that is sort of required today. And that is, of course, going to bring up the, uh, the price for it. But man, this is a fun car to drive, <laughs> even though it is just a two liter four cylinder it's not even the turbo with 210 horsepower but it feels pretty incredible to be driving this huge thanks to urban motors for uh providing this vehicle for me to review for you guys today very special car and as i said it's going up on bring a trailer uh pretty soon and i'll link it down in the description if you're interested in this car and thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video